that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as an actor. In the mid-2000s, when gossip stories of 20-something actresses behaving badly dominated the headlines, Scarlett Johansson was nowhere to be seen. Instead, this versatile actress wisely prefers to limit her dramatic behaviour to the big screen. One of four, including her three minutes younger twin brother Hunter, the Johansson kids grew up in Manhattan, where Scarlett was dancing, singing and acting from a very young age. Her movie buff mother took her to auditions, where she was so unchildlike that commercial directors passed her over. But theatre directors were captivated, and she persuaded her mum to let her join the Lee Strasberg Theatre Institute for Young People. She appeared in a brief speaking role alongside Ethan Hawke in an off-Broadway play at age eight, and soon she was appearing in film. Well, I wanted to do it ever since I could remember. You know, I, I used to tell my mom that I had a fire in my brain to act when I was like three, and she couldn't believe it. So she knew that there was obviously a drive there and a passion there to do it. Her screen debut was opposite Elijah Wood in North, followed by a turn as the daughter of Sean Connery in Just Cause. A brief foray into independent films saw Scarlett nominated for an Independent Spirit Award for her work in Manny and Lowe which led to her being cast in the high-profile but disappointing Home Alone 3. And then, thanks to future friend and co-star Natalie Portman, Scarlett got her big break. Robert Redford cast her in The Horse Whisperer after Natalie pulled out at the last minute to take a role on Broadway. Possibly because the love scenes between Redford and Kristen Scott Thomas lacked a certain spark, Scarlett's work in the film really stood out. Her wisdom beyond her years translated to a certain melancholia on screen, and her co-stars were more than impressed. Scarlett is, is a very young actress, but she's not inexperienced, and it's extraordinary to see how um, these... being on a movie and being playing a part and, and being this character, Grace, comes as a sort of... It's like this child was born to be it. You can't imagine her never having done it before. All but disappearing after this high-profile role, a teenager Johansson resurfaced a few years later in demand by some of the independent world's most respected directors. She appeared alongside Thora Birch as a cynical teenager in the uber-cool ghost world and then, because every actor requires this credit on their resume, was cast by the edgy Coen brothers in The Man Who Wasn't There. Interestingly, this is the first of her roles as an intriguing young muse to older men in crisis. Continuing with this theme, Johansson's star-making performance came with Lost in Translation. Writer-director Sofia Coppola's stylish hip film about an adrift tourist left to her own devices in Tokyo. She forms a complex relationship with an equally disaffected 50-something Hollywood actor played by Bill Murray. You know, it was almost like we were in a boxing match. We'd go in and we'd do the scene and then we'd both go off to our corners and <laughs> sit there and get squirted down with water. Scarlett was only 18 years old when filming and her rare chemistry and subtle knockout performance was wildly praised by critics. Hot on the heels of that role, Scarlett dazzled audiences in Girl with a Pearl Earring. As a result of these two strong performances, in 2003, Scarlett, at 19, received a pair of Golden Globe nominations for Lost in Translation and Girl with a Pearl Earring, respectively. She nabbed a BAFTA for Lost in Translation, and although she did not win the Globes, Scarlett was well on her way. Girl with a Pearl Earring was the first of four upcoming period dramas, which meant an interesting wardrobe. And Girl with a Pearl Earring, I was playing a servant, so everything I wore was just like a burlap sack. <laughs> it was actually like wearing pajamas. Before the corsets, however, Scarlett took a role in the little scene, a love song for Bobby Long, opposite John Travolta. And this young actress was again nominated for a Golden Globe for her work in the film. Scarlett cites the company she kept in the film for helping her raise the bar. It sort of helps me to step up my game a little bit and, um, and be, uh, you know, and to be 
focused and to want to be better. And um, there's nothing more incredible than working with an actor that you respect or a director that you respect because you strive to be um, great. In an unfortunate introduction to the sci-fi action genre, Scarlett was cast as the lead in Michael Bay's mega expensive flop, The Island. As expected, back in the artful hands of Woody Allen, Scarlett shone in the serious-minded match point. The result was another Golden Globe nomination and one of Allen's best works in years. Johansson would become something of a muse for the director, who would cast her in several more of his films and was a label Scarlett accepted. With a, you know, humble appreciation. In The Black Dahlia, Brian De Palma's noir thriller, Scarlett teamed up with boyfriend Josh Hartnett, who only had the highest praise for his on- and off-screen love. This girl has an open quality about her, I think, on screen. Everything she feels sort of comes right out through her, through her face. And there, there's not a lot hidden, you know. What's great about Scarlett is that she has this, you know, this real kind of generous quality about her, you know. She wants good things for herself and the other characters. Scarlett was decked out in period gear, her classic beauty lending itself to old Hollywood glamour, something which didn't go unnoticed by her co-stars. You see her come through through when she gets in her wardrobe and everything and she gets her character on and she comes out there, she's just absolutely beautiful. She's stunning um, in, a, in a classic Hollywood way. Um, and I think that she's, she's a, 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 an actor that can embody that and enjoy that. And that's very important for that role. Scarlett took something of a backseat in The Prestige, helmed by directing Wunderkind Christopher Nolan. The film starred Nolan's new Batman, Christian Bale, and our Hugh Jackman. The pair played rival illusionists in Victorian London, Scarlett a saucy stage assistant and paramour who inflames an already ugly relationship. Not that Scarlett was bothered. Well, I mean, just to be completely Frank, being able to have a love affair with both Christopher Bell and Hugh Jackman, I mean, that's pretty juicy, I have to say. Staying in her corset for the time being, Scarlett took a role in The Other Berlin Girl, a prestigious period piece that featured heavy hitters Eric Banner and Kristen Scott Thomas. And interestingly, the scheming Anne Boleyn would be played by Natalie Portman, whose withdrawal from The Horse Whisperer 10 years before had done so much to launch Scarlett's career. It was just so lucky. I've admired Scarlett forever. Um, since we were little kids, I would watch her movies and always think she was just so true in everything she did. And then getting to work opposite her was such a rare opportunity. Scarlett reunited with Woody Allen again for the critically acclaimed Vicky Cristina Barcelona. And it was around this time that she met and soon married resident hunk Ryan Reynolds. Unfortunately, the marriage only lasted for a couple of years. On the work front and switching gears professionally, Scarlett took a role in the film adaptation of the cheeky self-help bestseller, He's Just Not That Into You. Scarlett joined a strong female cast, which included Drew Barrymore, Jennifer Aniston and Jennifer Connelly. But it was the hot leading man of the moment, Bradley Cooper, that dished out the praise. I have the uh, unique opportunity to work with two of the most beautiful women uh, alive. Uh, and, and also uh, two of the most talented women uh, that I've ever worked with. I mean, I'm, I've just been blown away by Scarlett and um, Jennifer. I'm just blown away. I mean, there's been many times where I've walked away from a scene thinking, oh, I don't know if I matched them, because they really bring it big time. They're both, and they're both like diametrically opposed sort of aesthetically and energy-wise from one another, yet they share the same, uh, you know, gene talent. They're just, uh, yeah, they're incredible. They're incredible. So I'm really, really honored to be that that Ken hired me to play this role. I mean, it's a real, it's phenomenal. A turn in blockbuster Iron Man 2 cemented her reputation as bankable talent, and most recently she was cast in blockbuster The Avengers, which reunites her with Iron Man castmates Gwyneth Paltrow and Robert Downey Jr. So Scarlett has a full dance card lined up for the near future. But what's her reaction to her megawatt success? Luckily, I've become successful at it because I have no other hobbies. Having bloody-mindedly pursued success since the age of seven, you can't say that Scarlett Johansson hasn't deserved it. With her maturity, experience and clever role selection, she's carved herself a niche in Hollywood where, no doubt, she'll remain for years to come. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcasting glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available.
For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your Movie Network channels. Find or follow us at Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and at mnc.tv.